everything stretched to the years in our chronicle takes out the faith in us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing in, in itself in love, Galatians 5 verse 6. Your faith will always work if you walk in love. The above scripture declares that the faith works by love. God intends for us to live in the tremendous victory, power, and faith. However, everything is turned down when we walk in love in this world. The whole kingdom of God is designed so that we, we walk in love constantly, and this is what causes our faith to work. This is what causes us to experiment tremendous results. God wants us to have power in our daily lives. But he wants us to make sure that we, we will use that power in love. When we walk out of the love, love work, we walk out of the faith work. In order to experience greater power and anointing in your life, you have to focus on love. You must first accept God's love for you and then begin to live it out. Practice his love in you in your life begin to study his love and then operate in it this is when you will see god's power operating in you and through you walking in god's love will cause your faith to be strong in every situation, in every situation no matter what your challenges are make a quality decision to walk in the love of god declaration of faith god is love and he lives in me i now walk and live in the love of god in jesus mighty name Amen. Please get your Bible notebook and pen and get ready to receive the word of God from our man of God, Pastor Rika. Well, praise God. Welcome to our program this morning. We're so glad to have you uh, invite us into your homes, wherever you're watching us from. Uh, we're just honored to have you in our lives, and uh, we are really thankful to have this wonderful opportunity to share the precious Word of God with you this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Before we start this morning, I'd like us to just open up this morning's broadcast with a brief word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nashville, we give you thanks and praise, O oh God. We give you the glory, we give you the honor. Father God, we thank you for this awesome opportunity, Father God, to share your precious word, to hear your precious word. Thank you that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray, Lord God, for every person that is under the influence of this broadcast, under the influence of my voice, O oh God. I pray that the anointing of your spirit, O oh God, will be released this morning, O oh Father, to empower your people. I pray, Lord God, that every individual will be built up, O oh Lord God. Every person will be edified in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior. I pray this morning, O oh God, that you will bless and anoint, O oh Lord God, my mouth and my vocal cords to declare your word this morning. Let the word come forth, O oh Lord, unhindered and undisturbed from any, O oh Lord God, satanic maneuverment or strategy in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the power of your precious word, O oh Lord, which has the power to heal, to save, to deliver, and to restore and make whole this morning, O oh God. In Jesus' blessed name, Father God, we give you all the praise, the glory, the honor, and all the worship, O oh God. It all belongs to you. In your precious name we pray. Amen, 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 and praise God. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, um, I'd like us to, if you could, in your home, um, get some communion, as we're going to share communion at the end of this morning's broadcast. Amen. Just to celebrate the new month that God has blessed us with and graced us with. And I want to encourage you, um, in your homes, you know, have, have communion daily with your family, daily with your loved ones, and celebrate uh, the table of the Lord. That is a love feast that God has instituted for us. And we just thank God for his great love. Amen. <clears throat> now, I want you to, if you could, open up your Bibles to the book of Second Corinthians. And I want to read from chapter number 10. And I want to just pose a question to you this morning. You know, everybody is going through something in their lives. You're probably going through something as an individual, maybe as a family, maybe as a couple. 
Um, it could be something that's happening in your neighborhood. It could be something that's happening perhaps in the town or city you're living in or in your country. And, uh, you know, everybody is under pressure and facing challenges. And you may, you know, have the question or you may, you have probably asked yourself the question, uh, what can I do about it? Is there anything that I can do concerning whatever I am facing? Well, the answer to that is a loud yes. There is something that you can do. In fact, there's something that you can do, something that I can do, and something that we can all do collectively. And that is we can all pray together. Praise God. So this morning, I want to speak to you about the power of prayer. Hallelujah. Because there's great power in prayer. The most powerful force upon the earth and the most powerful weapon upon the earth is the power and the force of prayer. Hallelujah. You know, if you knew and you understood the power of prayer and you understood what you can achieve through prayer, I guarantee you that you would seize every opportunity there was to pray. To pray individually, to pray as a married couple, to pray as a family, or to pray as a church. You would seize every opportunity. The Word of God tells us that uh, one will put a thousand to flight. Two will put ten thousand to flight. That means if, if you as an individual, if you pray as an individual, you put a thousand to flight. And if you marry uh, or you get somebody to pray in agreement with you and you too, then you put 10,000 to flight. So there's great, great power available unto us through prayer. And uh, if, you, if you pray as a family and you pray as a church, you can put up to a million to flight. So that is the power that we have, you know, through prayer. Because prayer, uh, when you... When you pray, as you pray with other people, as you pray as a family, as you pray as a couple, your prayer becomes amplified, it begins to speak volumes. And I want to open up, as I told you, in Second Corinthians chapter number 10, and I want to read from verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. You understand that? It means although we are in the flesh, yes, we have a human natural body, we are natural beings, but we do not we do not wage war. Do you understand? We do not wage war according to our flesh, according to our natural self. The, the next verse says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, they are not of this world, they are not natural, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah! The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience has been fulfilled. Hallelujah! When you get that sudden urge to pray, be obedient to that, to that call to prayer. As believers, as Christians, as children of God, prayer is our life. That is where we receive our strength from. That is where we, where we receive our power from. You know, Paul says this, he says, our weapons are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. An account of scripture I want to share with you this morning is found in the book of Acts chapter number 12. And this is the account of Peter whilst he was in prison. From verse number 5, the Bible says, Peter was therefore kept in prison. So Peter was in prison. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. You see that? Although Peter was bound and he was confined to his prison cell, the Bible says that constant prayer was being made for him by the church. So it doesn't matter what you may find yourself bound in this morning. 
I want to... I want to share something with you. You are never alone as a child of God. The Spirit of God makes intercession for us and He prays for us and through us. There's times that you may find yourself in a particular situation, but there are people around the world that the Spirit of God will awaken and beckon to go on their knees and to bring you before the Lord and to pray and to bring your, your case before God. To lay, your, to lay your circumstance before God on your behalf. Peter was in a prison. The Bible says that constant prayer was being made for him by the church. That means our prayers, it's not just a once-off when you're facing a challenge in your life that you decide to pray or you pray when you feel like that should never be the case. You've got to pray continually. The Bible says constant prayer. There was constant prayer being made for Peter in Luke's gospel chapter 18 and verse 1 the Bible says Jesus told a parable about how men ought always to pray and not lose heart so we ought always to pray we ought to be praying all the time so as Peter was in the prison cell the Bible says that constant prayer was being made for him by the church and when Herod was about to bring him out so Herod had a plan the next day to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. So Peter was bound, he was chained, he was shackled, and they had guards watching over him, prison guards. And whilst all this was taking place, the church was busy praying for him. I want to share something with you this morning, is that when you pray, the angels of God begin to move. Your prayers activate the angels of God. Prayers engage the forces of God. When you pray, heaven comes to your aid. Heaven begins to move on your behalf. You are not left alone in this earth. Hallelujah. God has not left you alone. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Word of God. Praise God. And you have the angels of God encamping about you because the Word of God says that the angels of the Lord encamp about the righteous. So you are not left alone in this life. You are not an orphan. You are not a stranger. But God, praise God, has given you His Spirit and He causes His angels to encamp about you. The angels of God are watching over you. So when you pray, prayer activates angels. I want to show you something in the book of Daniel chapter number 10. Hallelujah. Daniel 10 and verse number 12. Daniel says, now he says, Then this was an angel that appeared to Daniel. Then the angel said to Daniel, Do not fear Daniel. For from the first day you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard and I have come because of your words. Hallelujah. Praise God. What the angel was saying to Daniel was, Daniel, the first day you, you went on your knees to pray, the first day you began to pray, your prayers were heard in heaven and I was sent. When you pray, God, your Father, hears your prayers and He dispatches His angels to move on your behalf. Prayer gets the angels of God to minister on your behalf. So don't be lazy with your prayers. You know, you've got many lazy people today. If you call a prayer meeting, maybe perhaps in your church you call a prayer meeting, you find only a handful of people would come up to pray. And they'd come to the house of God to pray. But on a Sunday... If you call a prayer line, you get half, 50% to three quarters of the church coming up for prayer. That ought not to be the case. It would be awesome if we could get three quarters and up to the whole church coming up on a Sunday to come and give testimony of what God is doing in their lives. Praise God. So don't be slothful in your prayer. When you are, when you're lazy in your prayers, even your angels are lazy. So don't be lazy. Begin to pray. Pray fervently. Pray with fervency. Pray with, pray with passion. Hallelujah. Your prayers get the job done. The Bible here says, we back in Acts chapter 12, as the, as the church was praying for Peter, verse number 7, Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by Peter. 
So the prayers of the church engaged the angels to move. And an angel came and stood beside Peter, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly! And his chains fell off his hands. Hallelujah! When the angelic hosts speak, they speak the word. Angels are activated by the word of God. They activated by prayer. When we pray, we pray the word of God. God says in his word, remind me of my promises. Praise God. Take the word of God and pray it into your circumstance. Hallelujah. So the angel of the Lord came and just told him, arise. And the, the shackles fell off from Peter's hands. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie your sandals. In other words, get ready. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. Hallelujah. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Peter thought that he was dreaming. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. You see that? Prayers will get doors to open on your behalf. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the door, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, You are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, It is his angel. You see that? Angels. Angels encamp about us. Angels are there to minister unto us. The Bible says, even with Jesus, Jesus was ministered to by the angels. We do not serve angels. We do not worship angels. We serve God. We serve Jesus. Hallelujah. As children of God. And as children of God and heirs of salvation, we have been given angels to minister on our behalf. Praise God. They are ministering spirits sent to us who believe according to the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that's what I shared with you this morning is that prayer should be something that should be constant. It should be consistent. Be consistent in your prayer life. Be constant in your prayer life. I want to go quickly to the book of Peter, the book of Timothy and 1st Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 1. Therefore I exhort you first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Hallelujah. Everybody needs your prayer. Amen. Everybody needs prayer. In other words, what Paul is saying to Timothy, he says that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. We should not be going about hating on people and telling on people and all that type of stuff. We should be people who pray for people. You must become purpose in your heart today to become a person of prayer. Instead of going around and telling on people or hating on people, be, a, be somebody who will go on your knees and will pray for people. Be a prayer for people. The Bible says he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Now I want to draw your attention to verse number 8. The Bible says here, Paul writes, he says, I desire therefore that, that the men pray everywhere. I desire that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. Hallelujah. That is the desire that men everywhere would pray. What would the world be if we had a world full of people who just prayed? People without anger, people without doubt, but people that were full of faith, 
people that would go on their knees before God and pray and understand that through our prayers we will get the job done. Hallelujah. Praise God. I desire therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Praise God. When you read Psalm 141 verse 2, the Bible says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. Let my prayer be set before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. That's Psalm 141 and verse 2. Let my prayer be set before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Talking of the evening sacrifice, I'd like you to go with me on a journey to 1 Kings, the book of 1 Kings and chapter number 18. This is powerful. Chapter 18. Here we find Elijah the prophet of God goes to Mount Carmel and he gives the instruction to the king. And he says to Ahab, King Ahab, he says, Summon for me all the prophets of Baal and all the prophets of Asherah. So there were 850 prophets in total. Elijah says, Summon 800, all 850 of them. Summon them to Mount Carmel for me. And when they get there, we find in verse number 20, So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered all the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? How long will you compromise? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, Not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls. Praise God. Let them give us two bulls. And let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull. And lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. Hallelujah. So Elijah asked for two bulls. Why does he ask for two bulls? Because Elijah understood according to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 15 and verse number 8. The Bible says that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. The prayer of the upright is his delight. The Lord delights in your prayers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the prophets of Baal took one, one ox, and Elijah took the other, the other bull. Then you call, verse 24, then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God, I want you to highlight this. I want you to embed it in your spirit and in your heart. The God who answers by faith. Fire. He is God. We serve a prayer answering God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many. And call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So this is kind of, Elijah is actually mocking them. He says, you are so many. There are so many of you. So maybe you should go first because then your, then your God will have an opportunity to hear each one individually. But Elijah understood that the God he served is the living God. And the living God, he is omnipresent. He is omniscient. He's the all-knowing God. He's the all-powerful God. Praise God. He's the God who hears the prayers of his people. So we can all pray collectively and God will hear each and every voice. Now Elijah says to them, okay, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire on it. So they took the bull which was given them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning, even till noon, till midday, saying, Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. No one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah began to mock them and said, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he's meditating or he's busy, 
or he's on a journey or perhaps he's sleeping and he needs to be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves as was their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out of them. So they began slitting themselves to try and get the attention of Baal. And when midday was past, they prophesied. You see, half the day had been already been spent and nothing had happened. So now they spend the rest, the rest of the afternoon, they, they spend that prophesying. When midday was past, they prophesied until, until the time of the evening sacrifice. Hallelujah. May the lifting up of my hands be as the evening sacrifice. That's just what we I just shared with you just now. Psalm 141 verse 2. And we just read in Timothy where Paul says, Men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. So the lifting up of my hands be as the evening sacrifice. So these guys were prophesying until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Elijah says, come near me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired, I want you to highlight this, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Friends, there are many broken altars in many people's lives. There are many broken altars in many homes, many families. That's why we find ourselves in a position today where worldwide we find almost every country around the world is on lockdown. And I believe in this time and in this hour, God is speaking and God wants to speak to the nations. He wants to speak to his people. God has locked down everything so that all attention and all focus could be on God. We need to get back to the place where the prayer altar is re is rebuilt in our lives, is rebuilt in our families, is rebuilt in our homes. Praise God. So Elijah here repairs the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took, he took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. So the taking of the 12 stones is significant and indicative of the fact of covenant, our covenant with God. Then with the stones, Elijah builds an altar in the name of the Lord, and he makes a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seers of seed. And he puts the wood, he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, laid it on the wood and said, fill, water, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. So they did it once, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar. And he also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass. Hallelujah. It came to pass at the time of the evening offering, of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near. And he said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O God, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Praise God. This is the distinction now between the prophets of Baal, 450 men shouting all day, crying aloud, slitting themselves to pieces, and no response. And here we have Elijah. Elijah prepares the sacrifice, the time of the evening sacrifice. He prepares, he builds the altar, prepares the sacrifice, and presents it before God. And he prays a prayer of 63 words. The Bible says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. 
We serve a God who answers with fire. I want to share with you this morning. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're facing. But if you can get on your knees. If you can build an altar unto God. And you can pray to the living God. God is a God who answers with fire. Hallelujah. That fire of God falls. That speaks of revival. That means when you pray as a child of God. The fire of God falls. Hallelujah. I see revival coming to your marriage. I see revival coming to your children. I see revival coming to your home. I see revival coming to your nation. Praise God. Don't give up with prayer. Don't give up on your prayers. Get on your knees and pray. Build an altar unto God. Reinstate the altar, the prayer altar in your life. And watch how God moves. Elijah just prayed, friends. He prayed 63 words unto God. And God answered with fire. The same God who answered Elijah is the same God who's with us today. He's the same God that will answer your prayers today. Praise God. Let us see what Jesus says in Matthew's gospel concerning prayer. In Matthew chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse number 5. Jesus says, And you, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they might be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, in other words, he's saying there's a distinction between you and the rest. There's a distinction that sets you apart from the rest. He says, but you... When you pray, go into your room. Hallelujah. When you pray, go into your room. It's not, listen friends, it's not the quantity of time that you spend. It is the quality that matters. It is the quality of that time spent that matters. Jesus says, you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the your door. Pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Another translation says you when you pray go into your closet. Go into you see go into your room. Shut the door behind you. Why? Friends the room when you go into your room when you are going into prayer what you are doing and the shutting of the door you are cutting yourself off from the world. You are cutting yourself off from what's happening around you. You are cutting yourself off from your circumstances. And you are moving into something that is greater than where you are at. You are entering the presence of God Almighty. Hallelujah. He says, when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord my God, He is my refuge, my God in Him I will trust. Praise God. When you pray in secret, God will richly reward you openly. Hallelujah. When you go into your prayer closet, this is what it's all about. When you end, what do you do in a closet? A closet is a place where you change. Your room is the place where you change. Hallelujah. Praise God. You go into your prayer closet. In other words, you, you, you go in to clothe yourself with something. When you open the closet, if it's cold, you'll take out warm clothes. If it's warm, you'll take out, you'll take out something that is a bit cooler. So you won't, you, you understand, you won't perspire so much. So that's what it is all about, going into your prayer closet. When you go into your prayer closet, my friend, you'll go in weak, but when you come out, you're coming out with the strength of God. Praise God. You'll come out with the power of God. Hallelujah. There's a change that takes place when you pray. The Bible speaks of Jesus. In many accounts, the Bible says Jesus went to a quiet place to pray. He went to the mountain to pray. Hallelujah. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 28 to 29, we read about the transfiguration of Jesus. The Bible says he went up to the mountain to pray and he took three of his disciples. He could have taken twelve, but he only took three. And when he gets there, he gets there to pray. And whilst he is praying, the disciples are watching him and all of a sudden, his face changes. 
It's like Moses. When Moses spent time with God and he came, he came, oh, Basabrohosha, when he came to meet the people of Israel, the Bible says his face shone with the glory of God, so much so the people could not behold his glory. Now that's what I'm sharing with you this morning. When you stand before God, when you pray unto God, you come out with God's power. The anointing of God will be heavily upon you. There's something that changes about you. If you go in weak, you come out strong. If you go in sick, you come out healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you go in with lack, you'll come out with abundance because your prayer is the answer. Your prayer is the solution. Jesus says, you sh your father will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they, that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father, watch here, your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. When you come to God, he's your father. So you can come to him as your loving father who loves you and delights in you. He delights to hear your voice. He delights to hear your prayers. The book of James chapter number 5 tells us, The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That means your prayers are loaded with power. With your prayers you can shake and you can shift and you can move a nation. You can do stuff in your life through prayer. Hallelujah. So don't give up on prayer. You know when you read in the book of Daniel chapter number 6. Let's just go there before we close. Daniel chapter 6. Praise God. You know there are many folk who want to be like Daniel delivered from the lion's den. There are many folk who want to be like David and slay the Goliath that is before them. There are many folk that want to be like Moses and deliver the people from, from Pharaoh. But let me tell you something, friend. You cannot live a prayerless life and expect to walk in spiritual power. David spent time in the back of the desert tending his father's sheep. Whilst he was doing that, he was worshipping God. What do you think he was doing? He was praying. Moses spent time in the back of the desert looking after his father-in-law's sheep. What do you think he was doing? The fire of God came. When he saw the burning bush, he had an encounter with God. You can have a God encounter through your prayers. Have an encounter with God this morning. Have an encounter with the living God so that when you come out from the burning bush, you will be a burning bush for the nations. When the nations see your life on fire for God, you'll set a nation on fire for God. That is what the gospel is all about. It's about spreading the fire of revival, spreading the fire of God's precious word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible in Daniel 6, I'm sharing with you, verse 8. The, the, the people knew that they found no plot against Daniel, so they knew they'll find it in the God that he served. So they say to the king, they say, Now the king established the decree and signed the writing so that it cannot be changed accor what? according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the decree. Whoever does not bow will be thrown into the lion's den. Watch verse 10. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. Daniel didn't go and cry with his neighbors. He didn't go cry with his friends. He wasn't a cry baby. The Bible says when he heard this, he went to his home. And in his upper room, you see, you got to go to the upper room. The room, you have to go to the upper room. That is where the power is. That is where the glory is. He went to the upper room. With his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three, watch here, three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since his early days. It was customary to Daniel to pray. Prayer was a way of life to Daniel. And that is what preserved him in the lion's den. My friend, that is what will preserve you from whatever you are facing today. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can go to the upper room. You can go to your prayer room and you can pray to God. And God will hear and God will answer. Hallelujah. Praise God. I trust that you've, be, that you've received something today. Amen. When Jesus, this is what I want to just say as a closing statement. When Jesus, you look at the life of Jesus. 
Jesus spent time in prayer. There were times Jesus would pray all night. He would pray. And then coming out of prayer, he began to minister. What you think sustained him? It was the Spirit of God, the anointing, the presence of God. God will renew your strength. Praise God. He'll renew your youth. There's some folk who are serving the Lord. And they are aged. I've seen people that are in their 80s serving the Lord for many, many years. And you, you take that person and you take someone who doesn't know the Lord, someone who's 50 years old or even 40 years old, half their age. The person that's 80 serving the Lord still looks younger than the person that's 40 years old. The person that's 40 looks older. Why? Because the Lord renews your youth as the eagles. Hallelujah. Though our outer man perish, our inner man is renewed daily. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to share with you, if you, this morning, you don't, you don't know the Lord Jesus. In other words, your life is a one-way ticket straight to hell. No passing begin, no collecting 200 rand. If that's you this morning... And that's your life, that you see your life is on a downhill. And you've been listening to this message. And you say this morning, I want to meet this God. I want to have an encounter with this God. Well, let me present him to you. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. So you can receive the Lord Jesus this morning. The greatest miracle, friend, is not the blind seeing. The greatest miracle is not a deaf ear that's hearing. The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. Salvation is the greatest miracle. And let me tell you, that's how God works. God will work from one miracle. He'll work another miracle and another miracle. So it will just ripple like that, but it begins somewhere. So God will begin with this miracle in your life this morning. The miracle of salvation. And from this miracle, I believe that many miracles will be wrought from this one miracle this morning. Praise God. And you'll be able to walk in spiritual power. You'll be able to walk in spiritual authority as you get acquainted with Jesus and you get to know him. The Bible in John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 16 tells us of his fullness we have all received. Praise God and grace for grace. That means you receive the fullness of God when you receive Jesus. In John 3, 34, we read that God does not give His Spirit by measure. John 1, 16 is telling us we, of His fullness. We receive His fullness when you receive Jesus. You receive the fullness of God. Hallelujah. And you receive grace for grace. God will give you grace for every season in your life that you go through. When you serve Jesus, if that's you this morning and you want to receive Jesus, or perhaps you've, you've served the Lord, but you've kind of drifted from the Lord and you want to make things right with God this morning, here's a wonderful opportunity. You maybe say, I don't, I don't want this opportunity to miss. Yes, don't miss this opportunity. Receive Jesus this morning. Receive life this morning. Receive healing and re take your life back this morning. That life is hidden in Christ Jesus, in God. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you this morning and I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. I thank you for the blood that you shed for me at Calvary's cross. I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that as I receive you, I receive eternal life into my spirit, into my heart. And I decree in the name of Jesus, from this moment on, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Satan, you have no unsettled claims concerning me. From this moment on, I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name, God's people said, Amen, Amen. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, well, praise God. Congratulations. Welcome into the family of God. Uh, the details are appearing on the screen. Please write to us uh, via SMS, via WhatsApp, 
via email. Just connect with us. Tell us what the Lord has done for you. And uh, if you've said that prayer, we just like to bless you with a gift to help you in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. And I want to encourage you this morning, wherever you are, go and find a church. If you've prayed this prayer, go and find a church in your local area. Connect with a church, a good Bible teaching church, Bible believing church. Connect with the church so that you can grow in your faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now earlier on I shared with you that we're going to have the table of the Lord. So I want to encourage you at this point to take of the communion. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God, for your son Jesus who paid the price for us. Thank you for the table that you have prepared for us. Thank you for your table. Thank you for the bread, O oh Lord God, that we break and that we eat, that it is for us, Lord, the very body of your son Jesus Christ. Thank you for the cup of drink that we bless, O oh God. It becomes for us the very blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Your word says, O oh God, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which is broken for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, given for the remission of the sins of the world. So we thank you now, O Lord God, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, we have received redemption, we've received remission of sin, and we've received new life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. We may partake of the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood which was shed for us. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I trust that you've been blessed this morning. Amen. I really trust that you've been blessed this morning. I just like to close off with a benediction, with a blessing. You can just stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the blessing of Almighty God. The Lord God Almighty bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hands. The Lord God of heaven and of earth cause his face to shine upon you, his servant, upon your house, upon your home, upon everything concerning you. The Lord stretch forth his hand and bless you mightily. The Lord God cause you to increase. May the Lord God cause you to flourish as the cedars of Lebanon in the name of Jesus. The Lord God grant you great victory and great success in Jesus' blessed name. As you go into the new month, I declare and I decree uncommon favor will visit you in Jesus' name. The Lord God uphold you and grant you sweatless victories. In Jesus' blessed name, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' blessed name, God's people said, Amen, Amen, praise God. Well, this is Pastor Ricardo. Thank you for joining us. Trust that you've been blessed. Please write to us, connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. We love you very much. Send us your prayer requests. Amen. Until next time. Keep walking by faith and God bless you. Love you lots.